North America, China, Europe, Australia. Ever since Thomas here took all the credit for inventing the light bulb, cities have lit up the night sky like never before. But the world is far from evenly lit. This is a population density map. Now, one would expect there to be a strong overlap between this map and this map of the night sky. And for the most part, there is until we get to Africa. Because despite having a population density greater than both North and South America, just under half of Africa still lacks access to electricity. Electricity. In its absence, students struggle to study past daylight. People may feel unsafe walking at night. Food cannot be easily preserved and businesses may be prevented from achieving their full potential. The solution might seem pretty straightforward, given Africa's reputation for being, well, you know, a pretty hot and sunny place. And while it's no secret or surprise that Africa has almost boundless solar potential, Africa faces a sort of solar paradox. While most of the continent does receive abundant sunshine, it often lacks the capital necessary to fund such solar projects especially to reach areas that need it most. However, as the price of renewables continues to fall, remote off-grid villages can now access electricity much easier than before. That said, the initial investment can still be a significant barrier to entry. One way around this has been the rise of pay-as-you-go solar systems, or PAYGO, which allows rural communities to afford access to electricity by paying in manageable monthly increments. One such example is the PAYGO company Yellow, which operates in Malawi, Uganda, Rwanda and Madagascar and boasts over a quarter million customers. Rather incredibly, this method of solar financing is electrifying the population of Malawi faster than actual grid electricity itself. Of course, fiscal limitations are not ubiquitous of the entire African continent, and more economically developed countries such as Morocco have spent big on improving their solar capacity, with the hopes of eventually exporting solar surplus back to Europe. In 2009, Morocco launched a solar initiative to spend an estimated $9 billion on solar projects with the aim of establishing 2,000 megawatts of solar power by 2020. However, by that year, Morocco could only reach a solar capacity of 750 megawatts with an investment of over $5 billion during that time frame. That said, Morocco have still come a very far way. Back in 1992, less than half of the country had access to electricity, but by 2020, they had achieved 100%. Of course, even in Africa, the sun doesn't always shine. As such, solar isn't the only renewable making strides in Africa, as Morocco also held the title for having the largest wind farm in Africa until the completion of Kenya's Lake Turkana wind power station in 2019, the single biggest private investment in the state's history. In addition to this, Kenya is arguably the only country in Africa using geothermal energy to a meaningful degree. Overall, Kenya is a leader of the green push in Africa, with renewables making up over 80% of their energy mix. However, in terms of accessibility, Kenya still has a ways to go, with only 70% of the population covered by 2020. Still, that's up from 30% 10 years prior, so they are making good progress. It's South Africa that currently leads the continent overall in terms of total solar capacity, with an impressive 6,300 megawatts of solar installed as of 2022. That said, solar accounts for a measly 4% of their entire energy mix, and a whopping 80% of the country's energy still comes from coal. Moreover, despite being the second biggest economy on the continent, electricity coverage is still only at 86% of the population. Indeed, Africa's biggest economy, Nigeria, struggles even more with only 55% coverage and a slow uptake over the past few decades. Needless to say, even the more developed countries in Africa have a long way to go to decrease their reliance on fossil fuels. Despite the image most people hold of Africa being a dry, arid place, some countries lying in Africa's wet, humid zone will need a different mix of renewables going forward as they receive relatively far less sunlight hours and much more rain. 
One such country who has adapted well to this situation is Ghana. With the creation of Lake Volta in 1965, the largest artificial lake in the world to this day, almost half of the country's electricity comes from hydropower. This of course came at a great social and ecological cost. Real Life Lore has a great video on the topic and the various socio-economic consequences of it. I'll link below as he covers the lake story in far greater detail than I ever could. However, while the construction of the dam was certainly controversial, Ghana has since become one of the leading countries on the continent in terms of their rate of electrification, as access to electricity has more than doubled since 2005 to over 85% today. Now, despite almost constant false promises and mismanagement, the pace of electrification in Africa should only increase as the price of solar continues to fall. Now, to watch more videos on topics that don't often see the light of day, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you again on the flip side.